Hello, and welcome to this presentation entitled The Autoimmune Matrix, Combating Autoimmune Challenges Naturally. The purpose of this video is threefold. First is to educate you about the topic. In this case, I will be explaining what autoimmunity is and the effects it can have on your body. Secondly, I will discuss ways to limit or eliminate the symptoms related to autoimmunity by looking at the causes or what we call triggers of the disease. And thirdly, I hope to give you the tools necessary and to inspire you to take the next steps in your journey to combat autoimmune challenges naturally. For more information about myself or my office, check out the website listed on this page, or you can email me directly with any questions you may have. A lot of you watching this video may already know me, but those of you who don't, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Scott Timko. I'm originally from Western Pennsylvania. I did my undergraduate studies at the University of Pittsburgh and went on to get my doctorate in chiropractic degree from Sherman College of Chiropractic. I've been in active practice now for over 30 years, utilizing chiropractic, physical medicine modalities, therapeutic procedures, and functional medicine to help thousands of patients restore and maintain their health. I'm currently working at Gonstead Physical Medicine, which is a multidisciplinary office, including naturopathic medicine, chiropractic, spinal decompression, physical medicine, massage therapy, nutrient IV therapy, and much more. As I mentioned earlier, the first thing we need to do is define what autoimmune diseases are. And to start, let's take a look at the definition of disease itself. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines disease as a conditioning of the living animal or plant body or one of its parts that impairs normal functioning and is typically manifested by distinguishing signs and symptoms. The current healthcare model is disease focused. If you feel sick, therefore you go to a doctor for a prescription to address the symptoms related to your disease. This is great for short-term issues as you're able to mask your discomfort fairly quickly. For example, you fall and sprain your ankle. You go to the doctor, they give you an anti-inflammatory, the inflammation goes down, the pain diminishes, and you know, within a few days you start feeling better. However, for more long-term issues, this medical model fails on addressing the real issues of disease. It may seem obvious, but because autoimmune disorders affect so many different organs and systems, we often forget that autoimmune disorders are diseases of the immune system. They manifest in different ways, but all behave very similarly in the sense that the immune system becomes confused and begins attacking the body's healthy tissues, mistaking them for foreign invaders. Due to the lack of understanding of these diseases, Conventional medicine works to treat the particular organs affected rather than viewing them all for what they are, diseases of the immune system. Therefore, patients are given referrals to specialists that are trained in those specific organ systems that are affected. This strategy, of course, brings the patients further away from treating their body's immune system, resulting in a vicious cycle. We know there are many different types of autoimmune disorders, and they come in all different forms, including type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis, inflammatory bowel disease, Guillain-Barre syndrome, psoriasis, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, vasculitis, Crohn's disease, endometriosis, fibromyalgia, Sjogren's, and over a hundred more of these diseases. All of these autoimmune disorders have two things in common. Number one, the immune system obviously is not functioning properly. Number two, from a conventional medical treatment standpoint, a formal diagnosis is required before they can begin any type of treatment. Fortunately, from a functional medicine standpoint, functional medicine doctors don't wait for the label to begin combating autoimmune challenges. In fact, we wanna catch these things before they begin and if you do develop an autoimmune disorder, we want to stop it from progressing further or creating another autoimmune disorder on down the road. Most conventional doctors today will solely focus on the chemical components of autoimmune diseases utilizing medications. 
We know there are endless ways to influence the body using this standard of care, such as artificially manipulating inflammation or vital hormones and many other essential chemical processes within the body. This is all done with one common goal and one goal only, and that is covering up the symptoms. On the other hand, functional medicine doctors address the origin or the cause of the disease to ensure comprehensive and effective treatment. Remember, covering up the symptoms should never be considered or disguised as a cure. Of course, we want to help the person with the symptoms, but we want to get to the cause or the bottom line of what's contributing to these autoimmune diseases. So I'd like you to imagine, if you will, with me, health being expressed as a triangle. At the base of that triangle are your genes, all 23,000 of them. Each of these are inherited from your parents and are present throughout your whole life. However, they are not necessarily noticed until some other factor activates those. These genes can be turned on or off, much like a light switch, by what we can visualize as the points on the health triangle. The three points on the health triangle are the chemical self, the physical self, and the mental or emotional self. So now we can understand that autoimmune diseases are caused by chemical, physical, or mental influences turning on certain genes. In other words, autoimmunity is bred mostly by our lifestyle choices and behavior, but other outside influences that we are unaware of can come into play as well. It is also important to note that each of these elements can interact with one another. Our influences chemically, physically and mentally can determine our health to be either compromised or optimized. So to optimize our health, there are various strategies functional medicine doctors use to battle autoimmune imbalances. Addressing all three components to the matrix is essential if complete healing is to take place. In doing so, we must look at the triggers which contribute to stimulating immune dysfunction. An overstimulated immune system will attack the perceived enemy, which is an otherwise healthy organ, gland, or system, which is involved in your autoimmune disease. Therefore, finding the triggers and eliminating them or modulating their effects is essential if we are going to inhibit or reduce the symptoms of autoimmunity. We're going to start out by talking about the chemical point of the health triad. The chemical components of health will be a large majority of what we discussed throughout this presentation, and for a good reason. They include things that we put into our own body, such as food, vitamins, minerals, and water, and other things that are sometimes added in that we're unaware of, such as pesticides, preservatives, dyes, and many others. They also include other environmental factors such as bacteria, parasites, and other microorganisms, allergens, toxins, and hormonal imbalances. The common theme throughout the triangle of health is your control. Your chemical self is influenced by what you choose to allow to enter your body, and in turn, the chemical influence those things have on your genes. Essential nutrients found in food, such as vitamins, minerals, amino acids, carbohydrates, and fats, are of course necessary for the proper functioning of the body. Each have their own job and everyone's needs are specific to their own unique health. Oftentimes though, we have deficiencies in those nutrients. And one thing to consider is the why behind these deficiencies. It may be due to not consuming enough of the foods that contain those nutrients that we need, or maybe it's impaired gut function, or the result of an existing autoimmune issue. Uh, it's been said we are what we eat, but I like to say we are what we eat, digest, absorb, and utilize. And if there's any issue with any of those, it can affect our body's nutrients. The most common nutrient deficiencies seen in practice include, and of course these 
are limited to a few, but these are the most common ones we see. And those are vitamin D, vitamin B12, zinc, omega-3 fatty acids, and believe it or not, water. Unfortunately, some of the medications that we take to treat autoimmune and other diseases can actually cause vitamin and mineral deficiencies and in turn hinder the immune system. You can see how this is truly counterproductive. You deserve to know if the medicine you've been prescribed causes deficiencies and if so, you also deserve to be given the appropriate supplementation to make up for those deficiencies. So be sure to question the rationale of every medication prescribed. See if there's any alternatives to those medications. And if not, make sure you learn what the side effects of those medications are so that you become aware of those and you can discuss them with the prescribing physician. This slide is a reference for you for certain medications and some of the deficiencies that can be caused through those medications. Now, I'm not going to read through all of those individually, uh, but we can leave this slide up. You can screenshot it or you can pause it and look through it. And this is just for your information. But as you can see, some of the common medications can create imbalances in some very important nutrients. You'll see commonly some of the B vitamins, vitamin C, magnesium, zinc, coenzyme Q10 and others. And so if you're taking any of these medications, I just want you to be aware of the potential deficiencies in these nutrients that may be occurring within your body. Please note that these do not go for all of these medications, but again, are just general guidelines for you. Above all, it's always most important to have the proper testing done to ensure you're treating your own unique needs. And we'll be talking about some of the testing that can be done to determine your nutrient levels within the body. And if you're deficient, in any of these as uh, we go along in this class. Another area of concern in regards to the chemical point on our health triad is toxic overload. We are exposed to toxins on a regular basis and many are often unavoidable no matter our best efforts to try to avoid these. These include but are not limited to things such as pesticides, air pollutants, chemical contaminants, GMOs, heavy metals, and water contamination. Toxins can be the cause of many health complications such as fatigue, joint pain, postnasal drip, bloating, muscle aches, sinus congestion, headaches, and of course, autoimmunity. Performing detox programs or cleansing programs may be necessary, but you should certainly consult with a professional first and proceed with caution as it may actually begin to aggravate the symptoms as these toxins are eliminated out of your body. In order to reduce this toxic buildup, you must first try and prevent the exposure to these chemicals. And then secondly, we must detoxify regularly. I do a light cleansing program twice a year. Uh, I call it my spring cleanse and my fall cleanse. It just helps me remember the time of year to do it. And it's uh, really simple things to do to help detoxify your body. Of course, there's more intensive programs that can be done as well. To reduce and prevent this toxic overload, there are many ways to minimize your exposure, such again at eating organic and non-GMO foods, uh, using water that's been filtered, using air purification systems in your house or your office, of course, using toxic-free household items. And there are several detoxification methods that can be utilized to begin cleansing the body of toxins. And those can be obviously just getting good proper nutrition, periodic fasting, exercises to help increase the sweating of your body and, and detoxing that way. We can make sure that we're hydrating. Matter of fact, one of the best detoxifiers in the body is water. Uh, we can also do more extensive things such as colonics. For more information on detoxing, because this is a very in-depth topic, uh, see my webinar, which is also on YouTube, and it's entitled Demystifying Detox, Taking the Mystery Out of Your Detox Diet. In order to properly diagnose nutrient deficiencies or most health complications in general, it's important to rule out any issues associated with gut function. If your gut is not functioning properly, it is unlikely that your body will be able to absorb the proper nutrients. Remember, we said 
that it's not just what you eat, but it's what you digest and what you absorb and then what is eventually utilized. Therefore, eating the right foods or taking supplements will go unnoticed and you may become frustrated with the lack of improvement if your body's not digesting and absorbing these nutrients. Some of the major functions of the gut beside the obvious one of digestion include helps with the immune response, hormone regulation, detoxification, nutrient absorption, vitamin production, and even mood management. Above all, the gut's sole purpose is to ensure you are absorbing the good and excreting the bad. Unfortunately, our gut is under constant attack, and these are some of the components that have been proven to significantly damage our gut lining. The first is just the standard American diet, and if we make an acronym out of standard American diet, it's SAD, SAD. Other things that contribute to damage are chemicals such as pesticides, preservatives, heavy metals, food dyes, GMOs, glyphosates, and microbial transglutamase. Others are infections such as bacterial, viral, parasitic, or even yeast overgrowth. Then we have food allergies or food sensitivities, including gluten and other grains. Excessive medications can cause severe damage to the gut and also chronic stress and even aggressive exercise can cause damage to our gut. These are some of the main proponents for the cause of leaky gut syndrome, which is a harmful condition that causes a plethora of health complications. One of the main causes of altered gut function is alterations of our gut microbiome. The gut microbiome is an ecosystem of organisms, including bacteria, yeast, fungi, viruses, and protozoan throughout the digestive tract. Most importantly, it is home to 80% of our immune system. And of course, alterations in our gut function can affect our immune system, causing autoimmune disorders. An imbalance in gut bacteria or increased permeability of the intestinal walls, which is also known as leaky gut, are both known primary causes, if not a prerequisite to the development of autoimmune conditions. These issues contribute to inflammation and in turn, the worsening of autoimmune responses. The 4Rs program was developed to provide an effective and complete way to address and treat gastrointestinal dysfunctions while achieving optimal health and digestion. For further information on digestive and intestinal health, and for more information on the 4Rs program, check out my webinar on YouTube called Combating IBS, Understanding and Recovering from Digestive Distress. Between the quality of the food we eat, our exposure to toxins, our gut function, and our body's ability to detoxify efficiently, our chemical makeup is directly affected. So finishing up, the chemical point on our health triad, we need to make sure that you're working with your functional medicine doctor to ensure you're receiving the proper testing, a comprehensive healing strategy, and the support you deserve to take control of your chemical health. We're now going to move on to the next point on our health triangle, which is the physical self. But before we do so, if you're learning anything from this presentation and you're enjoying yourself, I'd like to ask you to please hit the like button below. That helps others when they're doing searches for autoimmune issues to find this video. Also, you can subscribe to my channel if you'd like so that you'll have access to other videos and various health related topics. So let's keep going with the physical self. We know the physical component of health encompasses our physical activity, the integrity of our muscles, and quite literally, our body mechanics. There's a common misconception that as we age, our health naturally declines. We hear it all the time from doctors that the aging process is basically synonymous with our bodies breaking down and becoming sick. However, this is very wrong. Instead, our choices are what facilitate this breakdown. A sedentary lifestyle is a type of lifestyle involving little or no physical activity. A sedentary lifestyle breeds a dangerous cycle of health issues, including muscle atrophy. Muscle atrophy increases joint pressure, 
decreases flexibility and escalates pain. Pain then causes us to continue not exercising, which leads to more muscle loss and further joint restriction and further pain. Finding an exercise routine that feels right for you is one of the most important health decisions you can make. If you don't enjoy doing something, you're just not going to continue doing it. If you're currently in pain, however, you must start slow and work with a professional to guide you through a routine that will not worsen any of your current complications. In order to introduce physical fitness into your life, remember these tips. Start where you are. Don't compare yourself with somebody that's already been doing this routine for weeks or months or even years. Make small changes. Determine individualized goal, whether it's be it's the time to walk around your block or climb to the top of a mountain. Create a routine so that you're doing these exercises several times per week. If it's not on your calendar, if you don't do it at the same time every day, you're not going to do it. Do not give up if you do not see immediate results. Remember, health takes time. One of the best ways to balance the physical self is through chiropractic care and physical medicine. Chiropractic care aims to help relieve pain, improve function and mobility by removing areas of subluxations. Subluxations are misalignments within the vertebrae that put pressure on the nerves and all of our impulses from the brain to the body or from the body to the brain, which can create dis-ease within the body. The procedure of a chiropractic adjustment involves the application of a controlled sudden force to a joint with the goal of correcting alignment. Due to the chronicity of problems, poor posture, abnormal spinal curvatures or injuries to soft tissue, including discs, additional therapeutic treatments may be necessary. Some additional physical medicine modalities and therapeutic procedures which can help include passive therapies, such as electrical muscle stimulation and cold laser, which are offered to reduce inflammation, decrease muscle spasms, and relieve pain. Active therapies include specialized stretches, strengthening, and even tractioning protocols designed with your specific needs and abilities in mind. Spinal decompression decompresses intervertebral discs, achieving pain relief associated with herniated discs, protruding discs, bulging discs, spinal stenosis, and degenerative disc disease. Massage may be utilized to improve circulation, reduce swelling and inflammation, and encourage quicker healing. Your brain is a master controller of all functions in the body. From the brain extends the spinal cord, which goes down through the spinal column, and at each level in between the vertebrae, nerves exit and continue out to going to the organs and systems of the body. In fact, we know that nerves connect to every organ, tissue, cell, and system of your entire body. Through proper physical activity and balancing the structures of the body through chiropractic care and physical medicine, pressure can be relieved from the muscles, tendons, ligaments, joints, and discs. In doing so, a reduction in nerve interference in the damaging effects of inflammation is possible. With proper alignment, the body can actually repair the damage caused by years of physical and structural imbalance, as well as reduce symptoms of autoimmunity. For more information on physical health, check out my webinar on YouTube entitled Natural Ways to Relieve Pain. The last point on the health triad that we're going to be speaking about is the emotional self. The emotional component to self is the most often ignored, yet it is just as important as the rest of the health triangle. It's been said you are what you think, or what you think about you bring about. That's extremely important. Remember that. If you do not believe you can recover, it is likely that that will become your reality. On the other hand, if you are hopeful and positive, your ability to overcome health complications increases substantially. We know that stress and disease go hand in hand. When stress is not managed properly, or sometimes at all, 
the body takes the load, becomes inflamed, and often develops or worsens autoimmune conditions. Everyone manages their stress differently, but some ideas that may help you out include deep breathing, course exercising, yoga, massage therapy, meditation, creative art, spending time with loved ones, and going outdoors. Healing your emotional self is important, and here are some suggestions that can help you with that. Feed your passions. If doing these activities mentioned above isn't something that you really enjoy, find something that you're passionate about, then you'll continue to do it. Find the things that make you feel relaxed. Often some of the activities that we think are good for us actually stress us, and we don't need that in this particular situation. We need our bodies to be relaxed. We need to learn how to manage our stress. And the most important of all, don't forget to love yourself through your healing process. For more information on stress, check out my webinar on YouTube entitled Getting a Grip on Stress. We've gone over a lot of information here, so let's now deconstruct that autoimmune matrix and help you to begin your healing journey. We know that metabolic imbalances need to be addressed utilizing functional and physical medicine to find and correct the true cause of your symptoms. These causes can only be determined through proper diagnostic testing. Chemical, physical, and mental influences, or what we call triggers, then need to be eliminated or modulated to keep your health from continuing to be compromised. During our class today, we discussed the chemical, physical, and emotional components of autoimmune diseases. So let's break those down and take a closer look at some of the autoimmune triggers within each of those components. And we'll start out with the chemical self, and probably the most important trigger is alterations within digestive function, whether that's leaky gut or alteration of absorption of nutrients. Digestion is probably one of the most important components when looking at balancing your body's reaction to immune dysfunction. The next chemical component are food sensitivities. These include, but aren't limited to, gluten, dairy, corn, soy, egg, yeast, quinoa, oats, barley. Could be a multitude of different things. We may need to test you for those and find out which of these foods are contributing to your autoimmune problems. The next chemical component could be infections maybe parasites, molds, or viruses. Any of these things can be altering immune function and creating the symptoms of autoimmunity. Another chemical component are toxicity. You may have poor liver clearance and aren't getting rid of the toxins that are entering into your body, or you may have a toxic overload of chemicals, or you're taking too many over-the-counter prescription medications. Another chemical component is adrenal stress or burnout. We may need to be testing your cortisol levels or your DHEA levels to see how your body's dealing with stress. Another chemical component could be an imbalance within your hormones, whether those are progesterone or estrogen or testosterone. Another chemical component is blood sugar imbalances, whether that's hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia or insulin resistance. This needs to be tested for and balanced out if it is a problem. And one of the last, but certainly not least, of the chemical components is nutrient imbalances. We need to determine if your body is absorbing the nutrients and utilizing those properly. Some of the common ones we mentioned are vitamin D, your B vitamins, vitamin A, iron, selenium, and of course, many others. And then we moved on to the physical components. We talked about imbalanced structure whether those are the subluxations, remember the misalignments of the vertebrae, putting pressure on nerves, altering impulses from the brain to the body, your body to the brain, affecting immune function. Another part of the physical component was a lack of physical stimulation, including sedentary lifestyles. So we need to get off our couch and begin exercising, but again, taking it slowly and carefully with supervision if necessary. Then lastly, we spoke of the emotional component and whether we have emotional instability, whether we have increased stress and or negativity within our lives. 
Sometimes we may need to have some testing done to determine an imbalance within the brain itself or an imbalance within neurotransmitters and testing of uh, neurotransmitters such as serotonin, GABA, DOPA, or acetylcholine may be necessary to help balance the body out. Now that we've looked at the triggers that can contribute to autoimmune dysfunction, we need to determine which of these triggers are contributing to your own personal autoimmune issue. And the only way we can do that is through diagnostic testing. Before the diagnostic testing takes place though, your functional medicine doctor may want to do or should be doing a complete and thorough case history. This may include forms uh, such as symptom survey forms, chemical sensitivity surveys, toxicity questionnaires, neurotransmitter assessments, or many others. They may check your pH level. And then of course, do a thorough case history, looking at your diet, looking at your supplementation, your prescription medication, and even your family history. From there, they can then determine which diagnostic testing may be accurate or most uh, efficient for you. The first one that we typically look at is doing blood work though. Uh, and instead of just doing a basic panel, the CMP, the CBC or lipid panel like you get on your yearly, we may wanna include more intricate testing, including a, a thyroid panel, looking at potential autoimmune antibodies, looking at particular vitamins or minerals, doing a full iron panel, checking inflammatory markers, looking at blood sugar, including hemoglobin A1C, and there's a multitude of other tests that may be added in to help with your specific deficiencies. Other testing that can be done is food sensitivity testing. This identifies substances that may trigger potentially harmful reactions to common food, creating inflammation and a cascade effect within the body, including leaky gut symptoms and other autoimmune triggers. Other testing includes Hormone testing, we may look at progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, DHEA, and cortisol levels. Urine provocation can be utilized to determine minerals in the body and also looking at heavy metals, things like mercury, cadmium, arsenic. All of these things in high levels can cause the body to dysfunction and alter immune function, creating autoimmune issues. Stool testing can be utilized to determine gastrointestinal dysfunction by looking at the potential for parasites or bacteria within the gastrointestinal tract. Other gastrointestinal testing includes dysbiosis testing. This will give us a good evaluation of intestinal yeast and or bacteria within the gastrointestinal tract. We may wanna do a lymphocyte proliferation or what's called micronutrient testing. This measures nutrient storage in the body utilizing a patient's white blood cells. The white blood cells live for around three months so we can determine what is actually being stored within your body over a three month period, looking at vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, amino acids that are within the body. Much more accurate than just doing a typical blood test to look at your nutrients. Then for physical evaluations, this may include chiropractic, orthopedic, and neurologic evaluations. Uh, maybe including x-rays and any other diagnostic tests that may be deemed necessary to determine any issues with your physical components that are contributing to your autoimmune dysfunction. And lastly, the emotional components can be tested using neurotransmitter evaluation forms, and then if need be, going deeper and doing neurotransmitter testing. This is an example of what I would consider the basic blood work that I utilize on my patients. Now, when you get your yearly exam done, this is typically what's going to be occurring, a complete blood count with differential, a comprehensive metabolic panel, and a lipid panel. But this certainly isn't enough when we're dealing with autoimmune disorders. We need to go deeper by looking at blood sugar imbalances, checking hemoglobin A1C, looking at inflammatory markers, including homocysteine, C-reactive protein, of the erythrocyte, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, lactate dehydrogenase. We need a full iron panel, including ferritin. Then we may need to take a closer look at the thyroid, including TSH, uh, maybe including free T3, free T4, and thyroid antibodies. Uh, looking at some additional minerals, such as magnesium and phosphate, checking your uric acid levels, looking more deeply at liver function, including bilirubin and GGT, uh, possibly urinalysis. A lot of females are dealing with chronic urinary infections and don't even realize it. If you don't know your blood type, we need to get that tested. Looking at vitamin D 
and then any specific testing for any sus uh, suspected autoimmune disease is extremely important. So you can see how getting more detailed with our blood testing can give us more clues as what could be contributing to your autoimmune dysfunction. Unfortunately, we have to realize that allopathic medicine and hence most insurance plans will not cover services, testing, and treatment that we went over. In fact, conventional insurance-based medicine is built around the concept of labeling you with a reimbursable diagnostic code and then finding the medications or procedures to match. Whereas functional medicine is health-oriented, patient-centered, holistic, we look at the underlying cause of disease and the biochemical individuality of each patient and look at a preventative approach. A functional medicine model of care works through the functional medicine matrix, balancing imbalances. It considers the connection of mind, body, spirit, and often can't label your symptoms with a simple diagnostic name because body systems communicate. In addition, if your doctor is spending enough time with you, both in person and afterwards researching your unique case to get to the root of your issue, using advanced testing that takes more time and knowledge to interpret, and then personalizing your treatment plan to include natural therapies, the most likely answer is no, it is not covered by insurance. So we must consider physical and functional medicine as an investment over an expense. Working to transform your lifestyle and health will continue to reward you over your lifetime. Physical and functional medicine is not more expensive than repeat colonoscopies, ongoing workups with no answers, expensive imaging, blockbuster medications that only increase in dose and number, or an emergency or surgical procedure that could have been prevented. It is more of a priority decision than a cost decision. The upfront investment you make both financially and effort-wise often completely change the course of your health over your lifetime. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you learned something new here today, don't keep it to yourself. Let others know what you've learned. Feel free to share this video with others. Also, if you're watching on YouTube and haven't yet, please hit the like button below. Also, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to have access to my other videos on various health-related topics. So if you've been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, or if you're experiencing symptoms which are affecting your health, be sure to find a qualified physician to guide you in your healing journey, including getting the proper diagnostic testing and subsequent treatment. For more information on myself and my office, again, check out the website or email me directly with any questions you may have. Or if you'd like to set up an appointment, just call the number listed on this slide. I often like to finish my classes by leaving you with a quote. This one is from St. Augustine of Hippo. He said, God has promised forgiveness to your repentance, but he has not promised tomorrow to your procrastination. So don't wait any longer. Start today making the positive changes that will alter your health for the rest of your life.